What do you mean you're using an attorney? What are you, stupid? Stay tuned and you'll find out why I don't use attorneys and you shouldn't either. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Here we go! This is the Virtual Real Estate Investor Podcast with Vincent Polisi. Buckle your seatbelt buckle your seatbelt and prepare to learn how to legally make six figures investing in real estate with no money, no credit check, and nothing but a computer and internet connection. Learn how you too can begin generating buyers and sellers for free today. And why you're only two calls away from making a ten thousand dollar or more payday while never leaving the comfort of your home. And now, your host. The virtual real estate investor, Vincent Polisi. All right, Investor Nation, here we go. It's been a fantastic week. Got a bunch of updates to get you here before we get into this. Number one, I want to thank you all for all of the just absolutely amazing support that you have provided for what I call the little podcast that could. We've hit number one in all categories except for one, which is our business category in iTunes, new and noteworthy. And we hit number two there. So we're going to do what we can here this week to finally get to number one. Beyond that, Got a request by Jay Samet to appear on the podcast. And if you don't know who this guy is, do a little Google search and check him out because this guy starts billion dollar businesses. And I don't mean just one. I'm talking about multiple. He also negotiated with Steve Jobs on iTunes. If you go to his website at jsamet.com forward slash testimonials, you can see all of the just absolutely rave reviews this guy has gotten from just about every possible source of Incredible media. Check it out. He's coming on the podcast. We're doing the recording Thursday of this week, and he's going to cover crowdfunding in real estate and how to disrupt real estate. He's got a new book out, a new best selling book called Disrupt You, which we'll get into in the conversation so you can understand exactly what that means. This guy is absolutely fantastic. So I'm really excited to have him on. Now, if you're listening to this podcast and you're enjoying it, I want to ask you to do me a favor. I've got about five and a half weeks left in iTunes New and Noteworthy. It only goes for about eight weeks. And to get us to the top of the rankings and to help maintain our traffic counts and downloads, I need you guys to take a second and click that subscribe button in iTunes. And if you haven't already, please take a moment and do a five-star review and leave me a written review. And if you do that, I have a promotion going on right now that I call, give me 30 seconds and I'll give you 30 minutes. There is a form up on the website that you can fill out after you have completed the rating and review to schedule a free 30 minute coaching call with me. And these calls are hundred percent about you, have nothing to do with me, no sales pitch, no nothing, all you all the time. They have been fantastic for the people that have taken advantage of it. So be sure to do that. Subscribe, rate, review, go to the website, virtualrealestateinvestor.org forward slash podcast reviews, fill out the form and we'll set up your call. Now, as we get into today's topic about why you should never use an attorney, first, I'm forced to tell you because we live in a communist country called the United States of America, where you do not have the right to free speech, that I am not licensed to practice law. I am not an attorney. I am not providing legal advice. Federal law requires that if you do need legal advice, that I suggest that you go check out a bar certified attorney, which I don't agree with for all the reasons we're about to get into. So that's the disclaimer. Don't listen to me. Go see an attorney. You think I'm talking about breaking the law? No, I'm just trying to figure out how far you want it bent. As far as you can without breaking it. So I'm guessing most of you thought to yourselves, is this guy absolutely nuts when you read the title of today's podcast, especially then hearing me ask people if they were stupid for seeing an attorney? Well, let's talk about why that is. First and foremost, attorneys have a well-documented conflict of interest with their clients. A common misnomer is that there is a fiduciary obligation that an attorney has to you, and that is absolutely incorrect. Generally speaking, in real estate investing, you're going to utilize an attorney for one of three things. Contracts, closings, or litigation. The big problem here is that in all three arenas, basically what you're doing is admitting vulnerability. And this is the reason that you want an attorney or a perceived expert to come in and represent you and or draft documents and or handle closings so that you can be in your mind better protected. Unfortunately, it does not work that way in practicality 99.9% of the time. And if you don't believe that, let me give you what the actual numbers are. Attorneys do not provide any type of guarantee or insurance against anything. They simply provide opinions. Their opinion is simply their opinion. It's not law. It's not document. It's an opinion of 
the law that they're quoting to you, if in fact they're quoting anything at all. And if you want to understand the value of their opinion, just take a look at what the statistics actually are. And that is, is that 50% of the attorneys in America are wrong every single day in every courtroom in the United States. And the people that suffer for their incompetence is not them. No, in fact, they get paid for their incompetence. The people that suffer for their incompetence is you, the clients. And why do you pay for the suffering? Because of the propaganda brainwashing that they have done through fantastic marketing efforts over the years to put you in the vulnerable slash victim mentality. And what that does then, because you rely on what you perceive to be an expert, as real estate investors, which is amazing that you don't do this because you do it on every single deal that you do, but you don't do your own due diligence. You don't require that they proof up with documentation validating what their opinion is. And so you let them provide opinions only and no guarantees. As an example, if you listen to the episode, How to Lose Everything with Lease Options, you get to hear an actual real estate attorney, Angelo Russo, admit that he knowingly puts clauses in contracts that are in violation of state law and sells these contracts to clients. So you don't have to take my word for it. You'll get to hear it from an actual attorney. So let's take it a step further so you understand. There's absolutely nothing that an attorney can do for you that you can't do for yourself. There's not some big hidden mystery of knowledge or information that isn't readily available on the internet and or in a law library that you can't personally get yourself. You may not know this, but you have the ability to represent yourself in court under what's called pro se or sui juris. Let me explain to you what that means. Pro se comes from the Latin and it literally means on behalf of themselves, which basically means advocating on one's own behalf before a court rather than being represented by a lawyer. In civil law, the phrase sui juris indicates legal competence, the capacity to manage one's own affairs. In other words, without an attorney. This is how I represent myself in court and through massive amounts of self-education have been able to beat numerous high dollar law firms in multiple states. Now think about that for a second. How is that possible? I never went to law school. I've never been licensed to practice law. I've never been certified by the bar or taken the bar exam. How is it possible that I can beat multiple $500 an hour attorneys? And the answer is very simple. Due diligence and education. And unfortunately, that's the big thing that most people don't want to do. Instead, they want to rely on the supposed expertise of an attorney. Now, let me show you why that's completely idiotic. I'm going to read you a few statutes here from Corpus Juris Secundum and then a definition from Black's Law Dictionary. This comes from 7 CGS 4 and 7 CGS 2 and 3. Falls under attorney and client. 7 CGS 4 states that an attorney has an obligation to the courts and to the public no less significant than his obligation to his clients. Thus, an attorney occupies a dual position which imposes dual obligations. In other words, you're not in a fiduciary relationship when you have an attorney because he has a responsibility as an officer of the court first and foremost, not as your attorney. So 7 CJS4 talks about attorney and client relationship once again. It says his first duty is to the courts and the public, not to the client and wherever the duties to his client conflict with those he owes as an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. Now let's take it a step further and talk about seven CJS two and three. It says a client is one who applies to a lawyer or counselor for advice and direction in a question of law or commits his cause to his management in prosecuting a claim or defending against the suit in a court of justice. One who retains the attorney is responsible to him for his fees and to whom the attorney is responsible for the management of the suit. One who communicates facts to an attorney expecting professional advice. Clients are also called, and this is quote in quotes, wards of the court in regard to their relationship with their attorneys. Let me repeat that before I read you the definition again. Clients are also called wards of the court in regard to their relationship with 
their attorneys. Now, this is why it's imperative to do your own due diligence, and I highly advise you get a copy of Black's Law Dictionary so that you can understand what these words actually mean and what it is that they're trying to tell you. Because if you've ever been to court, you've ever been through any kind of a civil procedure uh, or criminal for that matter, either one, you know exactly how convoluted all the language is, all the Latin, all the different definitions, the process that they go through, civil procedure, criminal procedure. It's absolutely, it's a nightmare of a maze to even begin to try to understand for a reason. And that reason is to fool you and to scare you that you can't understand it, but you can. So let's talk about what Black's Law Dictionary defines as wards of the court. Wards of the court are infants and persons of unsound mind. Let me read that back to you. Wards of the court. Remember, 7 CGAS 2 and 3 says clients are also called wards of the court. Wards of the court are infants and persons of unsound mind. As a client, do you want to be classified as someone with an unsound mind? Well, I've got bad news for you. That's what you are when you retain an attorney. But they never told you that, did they? Now, you may have heard the age-old adage, a person who represents himself as a fool for a client. I disagree with that and agree with that. If you're not going to do your due diligence and get educated, then yes, I absolutely agree that you have a fool for a client and you have no business representing yourself. If, on the other hand, you are going to do your due diligence and get educated and prepare, then I totally disagree with that statement. In fact, let me read you this, which may just open your eyes and provide a little shock you're not ready for. The Supreme Court stated, a pro se defense is usually a bad defense. A 2000 study, the very first of its kind, seriously challenged these aphorisms. Professor Erica Hashimoto of the University of Georgia Law School found that, on the whole, pro se defendants actually achieve better results than their professionally represented peers. I'm going to read that back to you one more time. Professor Erica Hashimoto of the University of Georgia Law School found that, on the whole, pro se defendants actually achieve better results than their professionally represented peers. About 50% of do-it-yourselfers in state courts escape conviction compared with 25% of represented defendants. Let me read that back to you one more time. About 50% of do-it-yourselfers in state courts escape conviction versus 25% of their professionally represented peers. How is that possible? Pro se defendants are winning at a rate of two to one over those represented by an attorney. How, my friends, is that possible? Well, it's possible because of everything that I just told you. They don't represent you. They have a well-documented and bona fide conflict of interest. They are working their pay plans. Their pay plans don't differ whether you win or not, unless it's a contingency. Thank you for listening to the Virtual Real Estate Investor Podcast with Vincent Polisi. If you found any value in this podcast, please use our Give to Get method and take a moment to give us a five-star rating in iTunes and your favorite podcast service so we can keep giving you excellent episodes of real content you can use to profit today.